端となりましたので、人的者のドクターワンによります、がん研究におけるエピジェネティクスというテーマでセミナーを始めさせていただきます。人的者ではですね、25マイクロの小容量からの抗体の販売を行っておりまして、抗体の数でいきますと5万点以上の良質な抗体を販売しておりますなお今回のセミナーに関しましてご質問等ございましたら皆様方の広報にございます弊社のブースにて対応させていただきますのでよろしくお願いいたしますちなみにブース番号はですね本日の日付5月の15日と同じ5の15となっておりますオッケー、okay. yeah, So, thank you for coming today and joining our seminar.、Uh, it is our pleasure to be here and share our new understandings for the studies of epigenetics in cancer research. Well, actually,、um, uh, these talks will cover two of the most important research areas from the past decades to date, and epigenetics itself is not an easy course, not to mention the involvement of cancers. So,、uh, it is hard to describe all the details、uh, in the next 30 minutes. So, besides of the basic concept,、uh, today I'm going to give you in what people are interested while looking over these sophisticated、uh, research areas. Okay, so、um, when talking about cancer initially, it was thought to be solely a consequence. Of genetic changes in key oncogenes and tumor suppressor genes, which regulate cell proliferation, DNA repair, cell differentiation, and many other homeostatic functions. For example, the well known tumor suppressor effect P53 is a key signal for the DNA repair system, and the genes that are responsible to induce. For important stem cells, including ARC4, SARX2, CMIC, and GAL4, are notoriously able to become oncogenic when they were、uh, some abnormally suppressed in somatic tissues. However, the studies of epigenetics in cancer research recently, this includes DNA methylation, histone multiplication, and coding RNA modulations. Have provided extensive information about the mechanisms that contribute to a neoplastic phenotype. And、uh, I think DNA methylation is the most well researched epigenetic mark that differs between normal cells and the cancer cells. So the patterns of DNA methylation in normal cells is often inverted in cells when these cells become tumorigenic. So, this CPG islands of the promoter regions of tumor suppressor genes in cancers is often hypermethylated, while the CPG, while the CPG methylation of the, prom, of the promoter region of the oncogenes or of other p a r t of the genome is decreased. And this type of epigenetic deregulation is dangerous. So, when genes that、uh, control cell cycles are silenced, for example, It allows cells to proliferate and grow uncontrollably. These genes include like CDKN2A, P15, and RB. And in this regard, s actually, there are many other tumor suppressor genes were reported in terms of different homeostatic functions. And Gentex has produced a lot of antibodies against all these targets listed here for your research area. On the other hand, the hypomethylation of the global genome or the hypomethylation of the oncogene promoter regions r e s u l t in chromosome instability, activation of transposable elements, loss of genomic imprintings, and the reactivation of oncogenes. For example, loss of genomic imprinting of insulin like growth back to increase the risk of c h o l o r i d a l cancer formations. And in this case, many other oncogenes were also reported to be hypomethylate on its promoter regions, such as HRAS, ORIS, FGF receptor 1, and CMIC. 
Well, in fact, the underlying mechanism of this DNA methylation has been extensively studied, which indicates two key protein families. The first one is DNMT families, which aid and maintain methyl group to the cytosine. And the second one is TAC families, which remove, which reduce the methylated DNA in order to remove its methyl group through a cascade of chemical reactions. And of course, disrupted of these mechanisms due to the disrupted control of either the MT family or TAT family will result in tumorogenesis. For example, TAT1 was shown to suppress prostate cancer invasions. In this case, Gentex cooperates with Professor Ron from Taiwan Academic Sinica and publish a cell report paper. And we found that the downregulation of TET proteins was observed in the prostate cancers when you compare it to its normal counterpart. And this downregulation was likely involved in cancer metastasis as demonstrated by this Western blood assay with Gentex TET1 antibody. So you can see here that the reduced expression of TET1 was observed during the development of cancers. And a dramatic reduction was shown in the metastatic cancer cells in lung. Furthermore, we found that downregulation of TET1 can induce tumor formations as demonstrated by this mouse animal model systems in panel C and its quantitative data in panel D. And this tumor suppressing effect of TET1 was due to its demethyl activities that maintain the expression level of TIM2 and TIM3, which is known to inhibit MMP families is a well-known metastatic factor. But downregulation of TET1 will lead to hypermethylation of the TIN2 and TIN3, which then reduces its expression level and favors cancer metastasis. So this is just one of the many examples showing that epigenetic re re deregulation in cancer researches. However, it is still obscured whether this abnormal, this abnormal epigenetic control is a cause or merely a consequence of the tumorogenic activities. For example, the expression of DLMT1 was shown to be suppressed by tumor suppressor genes such as P53 and APC, and it can be activated by oncogenes such as CFOS and CJOM which in turn repress other tumor suppressor genes. So in this scenario, the expression pattern of the expression level of DMT is a consequence of the tumorogenic activities. And this finding um, highlights the importance of the interplay between genetic and the epigenetics, and also raises a key question whether can the abnormal epigenetic control itself can induce tumor formation, or it is merely a common event resulting from tumorogenic activities. So in terms of this issue, a research, a research group from the University of Toronto published a nature paper recently and showed a special case. This, this, case is, uh, is, this is a case of tumor called appendimomerus. So they, basically they found that this tumor is epigenetically deregulated, but genetically blend. So here I show you some features of this appendimomerus. First, these tumors occur throughout the nervous system, but are more common in hybrid in children. And second, the therapy for this tumor is highly dependent on the surgical resections followed by radiations. And unfortunately, the chemotherapy is, less, is of less effect. So to understand the genes that are responsible for these tumors, the research teams sequenced the whole genome or the exome region of the genomes from the patients. But they failed to find any significant recurrent single nucleotide variations or any mutated genes. Instead, they showed that this tumor exhibits a CPG island methylated phenotype called SIP. So significantly, you can see that um, compared to the SIP minus group B, the SIP plus group A exhibits more methylated CPG signs in their genomes, more genes with 
CPG methylations, and more genes were transcriptional silenced. Therefore, the presence of this kind of CPG plus appendage marmots can be detected by the, uh, by the methylation level of proteins. These proteins include CRP1, CYP26C1, and PKP1. And these proteins are so-called epigenetic markers. Furthermore, they found that the many of the silenced genes are related to a protein complex called PRC, PRC2 pathway, reinforcing this well, its well-known functions that suppress tumor suppressor genes through the interplay between histone modifications, DNA methylations, as well as non-coding RNA expressions. So this finding provided a direct an evidence that epigenetic deregulation is a cause to tumor genesis and it also highlight the importance of the synergistic effects of the control within epigenetic machinery itself. Because of the complexity of combination and permanation, less is known about histone modification disruptions in human cancers. However, studies have shown that um, the high DNA hypermethylation of the of tumor suppressor genes is, also, is often accompanied with a particular combination of histone modifiers, which modulates histone modifications. And these modifications include the deestylation of histone H3 and H4, and loss of H3K4 trimethylations, as well as again of H3K9 and H3K27 methylations. Here I, show, here I show you a representative list of histone modifiers disrupted in different tumors. And the interesting thing is that this, onco, this oncogenic or tumorogenic effect of these histone modifiers is highly context dependent. You can appreciate from the table that even the same modifiers have totally an opposite roles in different tumors. Or in the same class of tumors have different histone modif modification patterns. Therefore, it highlights the complexity of histone modification in cancers. And it also shows that the each individual tumor or even its subtype of tumors has its own modul modification patterns on histone. Okay, so in terms of the non-coding RNA, um, it is not surprising to say that coding RNA is important in cancers, and there are two major objects in this field. The first one is the well-known microRNA, and the second one involves a new concept called CERNA, which I will describe later. So microRNA is probably another well-known research to epigenetic marks. Indeed, it is really easy to dig out all the information that summarize the role of microRNA in different tumors. And this microRNA is also highly context dependent. <laughs> this exactly recapitulates the events of histone modifications and, uh, and it shows the importance of the microRNA and histone modification as well as the importance between microRNA and DNA methylations. So for example, TET2 and the TET3 are shown to be suppressed by a wide range of microRNA as shown by this Western broad assay with gene text TET3 antibodies. And this down regulation of TET proteins was found to be associated with a reduce in total cellular 5 HMC level, which is supposed the function of TET proteins were compromised by another epigenetic factors. So in this case, it's microRNA. Furthermore, they found that the reduction of TET proteins leads to abnormal cell differentiation, as shown in this figure that microRNA MIR-121, 25A, and MIR-29B, as well as MIR-101, can account for an abnormal skew of cells to myeloid lineage which then lead to abnormal cell growth in spring and increase the malignant hematopoietic expansions. Okay. Another event regarding uh, non-coding RNA 
is the new hypothesis that involves the concept of RNA competition for transcriptional regulations. This is so-called competing endogenous RNA, cRNA hypothesis. So cRNA can neutralize the surprising effect of microRNA by serving as a competitor to its targeting molecules. Therefore, with more cRNA expressions, more microRNA were antagonized and leading to the increase of its targeting proteins. But unlike microRNA, cRNA can be a non-coding region of a protein coding transcript. And this is so-called coding independent regulations and was also shown in human cancers. For example, the HMGA2 was shown to promote tumor formations independent on its protein functions, but dependent on the microRNA less seven binding sites through its three prime UTR. So as, as you can see in this diagram, the target proteins which was originally repressed by the less seven microRNA become abundant due to the neutralizing effect of HMGA2 against the late 7 microRNA here. And this is demonstrated by both in vitro and in vivo studies, which shows the requirement of late 7 binding site on the HMGA2 3' UTR regions, but not its ATG protein translation sites during the development of cancers. The underlying mechanism that governs this tumorigenic activity is the HMGA2 cRNA activity, which, in, which enhances TGF beta signaling through the, through the overexpression of TGF beta receptor 3 and activation of its downstream factors MET2. So, taken together, we have seen many examples showing the mutual inference between epigenetics and the genetics, and even the epigenetics interplay within, within the epigenetic machinery itself. So let me take this cartoon to summarize my talk today. I think cancer is indeed an accumulation of genetic and epigenetic mutations embedded in the genome that give cancer cells an advantage over other normal cells. And actually, many research groups are now focusing on the development of epigenetic drugs to treat cancers. For example, the 5 enzyme cytokine has been approved by FDA for the treatment of some myeloid leukemias. And many ongoing projects are focusing on the clinical uses of the epigenetic biomarkers. The key factors for epigenetics in cancer research include the MT family, TED family, as we have mentioned today, and many others like HDSC, MBD, etc. And microRNA are also important, especially for the MIA-143 and the MIA-145. And the cRNA, a new hypothesis, include the P10 network and the, and the HMGA2 proteins. So the studies of epigenetics has shed light on a new direction for cancer research. And actually, Gentex has helped scientists organize and collect all the information and the related reagents for different research areas, including epigenetics, cancer research, as well as stem cells, and many other different research areas. So as a leading company of antibodies, Gentex understands the urgent need of quality antibodies for the science communities. Our experience in antibody production can be dated back to the 1997 when Gentex was first found in San Antonio. Now we have 121 employees, and 10% of our people have PhD degree in different research areas. We have more than 57,000 antibodies and more than 300 reagents for protein experiments. And we also produce a, a complete panel of antibodies against the targets in cancer and epigenetics. These antibodies include TED family antibody and antibodies for histone modifications. And our well-known antibodies are ATM antibodies, are tumor suppressor genes, and the the prolonged oncogene beta-catenins. 
So up to April this year, we have more than 4,000 publications using our antibiotics in this field. And our product has been extensively examined and verified to uh, respectable qualities. So shown here is the list of the cited antibodies from Gentex that I mentioned today. This includes P53 antibody, CDKN2 antibody, TIN2, and HMG2 antibodies. Actually, we have helped many research groups to publish their works in many big journals. So I believe yours will be the next. So thank you all for coming today, and I would like to take any questions at the top. Thank you.